Hello everybody and welcome back to our channel. For today's video I thought I would film a labour and birth story and a little bit about my pregnancy as well. I just thought I'd start off by saying that I wasn't on any contraception at the time I'd felt pregnant. A lot of people think I was because I had the implant. But <laughs> I have been on three contraceptive pills, uh, microgynin, yasmin and loestrin, I think you pronounce it. None of them worked for me so I finally decided to get the implant fitted and on the transition I fell pregnant. Yeah, we didn't mess around in the honeymoon stage. Because I had the implant fitted um, just after I'd fallen pregnant, I had no reason to believe that I was pregnant. I had no sickness, I barely had a bump, I just kind of filled out. Um, the only thing that did strike me was that my boobs had got bigger, but that's not out of the ordinary for a young girl growing up so I just thought great my, my boobs are growing. I really had no idea that I was pregnant and it wasn't until I went out for my 18th birthday and I'd been out drinking. Yes I feel very guilty about that now but I didn't know. Uh, the next morning I was so so sick. I was in the car and I felt like I was going to pass out. I just wanted to get home and lie down and I thought to myself this is not a hangover. This is definitely something else. So I put off doing a test for weeks. My birthday weekend was, I think it's the 30th of April or something. I didn't do a test until the 11th of May, so quite a while I put it off for. I finally got around to doing it and I was just, just so terrified of seeing two blue lines because part of me thought, oh, I must be. And the other part of me was like, but I've got the implant, I can't be. But I was. <laughs> Um, I threw the test away because I didn't think I was and it, nothing was coming up for a while um, and then I went into my mum and I thought oh I better check it and I said to her what does, what does this mean on the test and I gave it to her she just looked at me and she just went completely like lost all colour in her face and was like yeah you're pregnant Chloe um, I don't really know how to describe how I felt I was quite I don't want to say disappointed but I was. I had so many plans for that year. I wanted to au pair in Australia. I wanted to go to Norland College and at that time seeing the pregnancy test I thought I was quite selfish really. I was a bit like okay well that's my life over. But that's not true at all. Actually I have done so much more with my life than I would have done if I didn't have a baby now that I have a baby because you just you just straighten out your priorities I think and yeah I just I'm so glad that I had a baby young and it's something that I would have never ever considered like I wanted babies when I was 30 and I'm 19 so it's a massive massive difference anyway on to my actual labour um I think it must have been the 20 21st of August 2017 and I started to get what I thought was strong Braxton Hicks. So I said to Sai, I think I'm getting strong Braxton Hicks. I kind of want to bring on my labour now because it's it seems like early labour to me. It was really intense period pains and I thought this is not something I've had so far in this pregnancy. So we headed towards a Clifton Suspension Bridge to go for a long walk around that area. And it was lovely. It was really nice. I played football with my brothers and sisters and you know, just really tried to bring on my labour. It was about four o'clock that day that I started to get contractions and I, they were no longer Braxton Hicks, they were a lot more intense. And I didn't tell Sai at this point because I wanted to be sure, I didn't want to get his hopes up. So I timed them and they were coming every 15 minutes or so and lasting for about 30 seconds. And after an hour of having them, I said to him, yeah, I've been having contractions for the past hour, so I, I think I'm in labour. And the next day, so ignore all of that, it wasn't the 21st, it was the 22nd. I'd woke up and I was just really exhausted, my pains were a lot more intense and I said to my mum, I think I'm going to be giving birth today because things are moving quite quickly, my contractions are getting stronger and stronger by the hour and she was like, that's fine, we'll just monitor it and she went to work as normal and so I went to work as normal and I was left at home on my own and I contacted my grandparents because I was just so scared and I said to them, oh please can you come around here because I'm on my own and my nan was due to get her hair done so her lovely hairdresser actually came to my house 
to do my nan's hair so that I had some company. By midday it was um, a lot, lot more intense. So I called up my team of community midwives and I said to them, I, I think things are moving up quite quickly, I think I'm going to be giving birth soon. And they're like, that's fine, just call up Caution, which is where I chose to have Amelie, and uh, see what they say. So I did, and they asked me to come in. So I went over to Caution. My mum and Sai both came home from work to come with me, and they measured me there to be three centimetres, and I don't know how many centimetres you're meant to be. I think it's four. So because I was three centimetres, they sent me home. I was a little bit disappointed because I wanted to be sat in the water with candles and hypnobirthing, you know, what every girl wants when they give birth. And I wasn't, I was sat at home on my bed, I had Sai one side telling me to have a nap, and my mum the other side like, oh, I'm gonna have a quick shower, Claire. And I thought, thanks guys. <laughs> I was uh, in full blown labour at home and I hadn't had any pain relief at this point so I was in absolute agony, it was just, it was so painful. Um, I was sick and my plug came away, sorry. So by this point I think about two hours had passed so I'd gone, I dilated quite quickly. I'd called up costume and I said to them, I think I am in full blown labour now and they thought, oh really, we thought it'd be about 14 hours before you start pushing. And I was like, no, trust me, like, I'm in a lot of pain. <laughs> it was rush hour traffic, and we headed towards Cosham, and I nearly broke the thing that you hold on to in the car, I nearly broke the headrest, I was just in agony. <laughs> and we finally got there, and I couldn't even walk. I got wheeled into the hospital, and the guy came up to us and said, oh, I'm really sorry, you can't get wheelchairs into the lift, you're going to have to walk up. And so I was like, I'm I'm getting this wheelchair in this lift. And he did, he got me in there, we went straight up to the midwives. And they looked at me, they looked at each other and they were like, we need to run this bath now. I got in there, they measured me and they were like, you're 9.5 centimetres now. So where I was 3 centimetres two hours ago, I was now 9.5, ready to push. So that was quite fast. They asked me if I wanted to get in the pool still and I was desperate to have a water bath. So I ran over, I avoided the steps, hurdled into the bath and they were just like, wow. I had some gas in air and that water bath was just so lovely. I would 100% do it again. I just felt like all of the weight had been lifted off of me. I was relaxed, I had my own space and it was just really lovely. I just loved it so much. I think I was in the pool for probably 10 to 20 minutes before I pushed Amelie out. It did happen really, really quickly. Amelie was born at 11 minutes past five and she weighed five, a tiny, tiny five pounds too. Um, I honestly think a massive, massive reason why my labour went so smoothly is just because I went in there with a really positive mindset. I think that really helps. I was so nervous to give birth, but really excited at the same time. So I told myself, go in there, breathe through your contractions. How bad can it be? And I mean, I didn't scream like I thought I'd scream. I, I mooed like a cow. So yeah, that was all fine. And then I just wanted to get out the pool and hold her because she was so tiny. and. I wasn't allowed quite yet because I had to get, you know, sat down, legs up in stirrups because I only went and got myself a second degree laceration. For those of you who don't know, I basically had one massive hole instead of two little ones. Yeah, I couldn't sit down for weeks. <laughs> I'd read so many things about how to avoid tearing and none of it, I, I, it just all went out the window. I wasn't thinking straight when I was pushing, I just thought, ah, get this baby out. I'd honestly go as far to say that the recovery for me was a lot worse than the labour and that's the thing that I'm most nervous about for when I go on to have another baby because, oh god. So I went on to deliver my placenta and I did have the injection to bring that on because I just was terrified of going to theatre and apparently after 30 minutes or so you've got to have it removed surgically and I was like, yeah, no thanks. I gave birth to my placenta and the placenta membrane didn't come away and I mean I've, I've heard of a retained placenta before but I've never heard stories about a placenta membrane not coming away so when I discovered this four days later after I'd been discharged from hospital I was terrified I'd searched up what it, what it was and 
I was really scared by the results. I mean, we've all Googled our symptoms. That was very scary because, the, I mean, the placenta membrane is big and it was coming away and it was not the most pleasant of things and it was uncomfortable and basically if it would have been in there any longer I could have got an infection and it could have been life-threatening so I was rushed into hospital again without Amelie this time which was quite sad and they had to remove it for me in a non-surgical procedure. I'd say it took me a little over six weeks to recover physically, just because healing a tear is quite, I don't know, quite a lengthy process. It takes a little bit of time to remember that you're not so fragile down there. I think emotionally, I'm still recovering. Like nine months down the line, I think, I think it's still like catching up with me. I'm still not myself. The way I look at things, the way my relationships are with other people, it's just everything about me emotionally is just different. I think they do say that it's nine months to grow a baby, so nine months to recover. So hopefully in the next couple of months, I'll start to see a little difference and feel a little bit like myself again. Sorry if this video was in any way disturbing. I'm quite honest of talking about what my body's been through. And I love talking about babies, Amelie in particular. Sorry she's not in this video by the way, she's napping and there was no way I was waking her up just to film because this baby doesn't nap. I think having a baby has not put me off having another because I, I'm i so broody at the moment and filming this is not helping because I'm just like, I want babies. But no, not yet Chloe. Thank you so so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you next time. Bye!